Okay. I trying to train out of myself after I throw down to kick in the head. Um, you should not do that when you're demonstrating to your students. I shouldn't do it either because it's, all, it's assault. Because assault. It's I, assault. Assault. I th you no longer a threat to me. You choke. I was able to release. You're on the ground. It would be very hard for me to justify in court why I, I took you down to the ground, why I kept on kicking you in the floor. Why didn't I just run away? Okay, so that's an important understanding of when self-defense, that line when self-defense turns into assault. I learned Krav Maga in the army. I learned Krav Maga in the army. I was teaching Krav Maga a good, yeah, good 18 years ago. It's changed since, but back when I was training, it, it, we, the nature of war has changed. When I used to teach Krav Maga, when I originally learned, we were learning to fight the, Syrian, the Syrians in the trenches. Soldiers kill soldiers, that's what they do. You, you know, you're, you're there in a battle and your job literally as a soldier is to kill the enemy so soldiers. Unless they surrender, but on the battlefield. So we were trained, you know, somebody comes at you with a knife, you block, you defend, you disarm and you kill them with their own knife, if that's that's there. Somebody grabs you, take them down to the ground, you, you kill, 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 kill. That's what combatives traditionally was. But nowadays, more and more, military in Israel, in America, everywhere, the nature of battle changes. We're, we're, we're fighting more guerrilla type combatives inside civilian populations. The line between civilian and combatant, especially in places like Afghanistan and Iraq and the West Bank and Gaza, is, is really blurred. So even our crop and gut training has changed. It's not that every person that comes attacks me, I finish even as a soldier by shooting them or stabbing them. Uh, or doing. It, it, it's complicated. It could be a 14-year-old kid that's you know, been pumped full of drugs and sent to front line by evil people. And I, I don't want to kill. While they, they're definitely capable of killing me, I don't want the end, end result to be. And also, even if it's a combatant, if, if it's a soldier, maybe has more, maybe has more value if I can capture. It's not the so our fighting is not so much done in battlefields anymore. It's done in cities with civilian population. So Krav Maga is adapted in terms of that. We don't teach Krav Maga like like we used to 18 years ago, and it's much more in line with civilian. It's much more in line with law enforcement applications where my aim to separate. And it also makes sense, because when I'm a soldier, if I get attacked, I defend, I separate, and then I have options. I can use my weapon, I've got a crew, I've got, I've got my, my uh, squad with me that, that can take control of the situation, so it's no longer that's it, I gotta, like in the old school movies, I gotta go in and trench warfare, kill somebody with my bare hands. That exists sometimes, but it's not. It's not all the time. So it's important we understand and important when we're teaching, especially civilian applications of Krav Maga, we're teaching correct use of force. It's not, it, it really has to be proportional to the threat that we face. You came, you grabbed me, you're strong, you're bigger than me. I have reasonable justification of using force. But now I defend myself, you're on the ground. How much force am I going to use? I need to pull it back because the level of threat to me is no longer as big. And that's important you guys understand that it's Krav Maga instructors. Okay, let's do choke from the side. 